Hey everyone, I'm Chris. I'm a lighting designer, director, technician, and video tech in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. I've been learning Unreal Engine uh, pretty much as soon as my job ended in March, um, and I've been focusing more or less on that the whole entire quarantine. Um, I got sick and tired of not being around an MA2 and fixtures anymore. Um, so I decided to create a virtual previous suite of my own. Uh, I am lucky enough that I do have a MA2 node, so I do have two universes of DMX that I can actually output, which is kind of a game changer. Um, but yeah, so a little bit about my setup. Um, I have a tower, which uh, has a 6-core CPU and a 2070 Super in it. It also has a Decklink Duo. Uh, the other computer in my setup is a Razor Blade Stealth um, that is connected to two USB to Cat 5s. One of them is for the MA Net network, the other one is for the ArtNet network. Um, the ArtNet network is going directly into the tower. Um, the MA network hits a switch, and the node, the tower, and the laptop are all um, hitting that switch. Um, my laptop also has an HDMI out going to a decimator um, that's converting it to SDI which is going into the deck link um, which you can see on the screen is kind of our MA capture window here um, slightly unnecessary but kind of awesome all at the same time so yeah um, one of the things to note when I'm when you use the black magic card, um, let's just go into our bundle here. Um, I always tend to check 10-bit uh, YUV and is sRGB. Um, that just seems to be the black magic color space ecosystem, and things tend to like that. And this looks good and not all grayed out. And that's that's what I've have noticed. That's what I've noticed has the best result. Um, yeah, so let's go into our MA settings to, uh, I'll show you how everything's patched and how things are set up to output uh, ArtNet. So we're in MA here, and we'll go to our fixture patch, and I just have um, a couple LEDs patched uh, starting at 142, just, just RGB, nothing too crazy. Uh, if we go to our network control, you can see that I am hooked up to a node, and there are two laptops in session. Um, that's just the easiest way for me is to you know, have two laptops with an ArtNet connection. Um, there's ways you can do it all on one PC with, you know, loopbacks and, you know, the 127.0.0.1 IP address and, you know, things of that nature. But to me, it's just easier to do it this way. Plus, I'm also capturing the uh, desktop of the laptop um, as well. So it just it, this just works better for me. Uh, if I go to network protocols, you can see that uh, my ArtNet tab, I am outputting um, 15 universes. Um, it's a little more than we need. It's a little more than I have, um, but I just kind of like to give it a little overhead. Um, I start it at universe 0, which is really universe 1, um, because 0 is 1 in ArtNet world. Um, and yeah, I think that's it on the MA side. Um, I have... Let's take a quick look here. I have, if we go into my layout views, um, I have a sequence that just kind of does a little blue-green chase. Um, a little blue-green kind of PMW there. So let's go back to Unreal. Oh, we can still see it, awesome. Um, so there's a couple couple things to make this work here. So I have these four cubes, um, and they have a DMX material applied on them. But first, let's start by looking at uh, my DMX library that I've created. Um, if we go into controllers, you'll notice that I've created a 
MA2 um, controller and the IP address of it is the tower that's running Unreal's ArtNet IP address. Okay, so that's 10.0.0.11. My protocol is set to ArtNet. Um, I have one fixture type. Um, I call the RGB material. And to kind of create this fixture type, I downloaded a GDTF file. Um, what is a GDTF? It's kind of it's kind of like a uh, enclosed. Let's just say it's like a ball of information, and it'll have um, 3D models and textures and DMX information, all kind of enclosed in this ball of information and, and kind of wrapped formally and called a GDTF. I'm sure I know it stands for something. I just have no clue what at the moment. Um, so I've downloaded that and you know basic RGB. I've, I've brought it into here. We can see that the functions of it are uh, color add R, color add G, uh, and color add B, just like you would expect as a lampy. Um, so in, in our fixture patch here, uh, you can see I've patched four fixtures starting at 142, just like we talked about in MA. And uh, if we go into our monitor tab, you can see um, down the line here, starting on 142-ish, that we got some stuff uh, moving around. We get some, uh, some channels channeling. We'll save and exit out of this. Um, we're going to take a look at our DMX material right now. Um, so our DMX material is as simple as it can get. It's just a vector parameter node plugged directly into base color. Um, once we have that, we name the parameter color. We close it out. And we create a material instance of this. Uh, you just right click and hit create material instance. That'll bring this up. Um, and then you apply the material instance to your desired meshes. Um, for the desired meshes, we have a blueprint. Um, so I've created this blueprint and I'm gonna do my best to explain it because it is a little confusing. Uh, we have the event begin play that'll go into a bind to on protocol received um, what that'll do is that will just say at the beginning of the gameplay we're going to do something we're going to do this custom event whenever we get DMX um, and we'll put the DMX subsystem as the target so whenever we hear DMX we're going to do this custom event um, we're going to add we added well I've already added a DMX component to this uh, static mesh here and I've dragged it in um, we get the fixture patch we go to uh, get DMX functions again I'm, I'm in the artnet protocol um, and the out functions for me for this particular project is color add RGB just like we saw in our uh, you know in our functions for our GDTF um, what we're doing is we're setting the color of the material um, so what we'll do is, you know, R, X, Y, Z, um, respectively, and that will reflect the static mesh component. Um, there's a much better, much more in-depth tutorial that Pixel does, does, um, and it's great. That's where I learned it. So definitely check his uh, channel out if you get the chance. So we'll compile uh, and save this. And I believe, oh, so let's, let's take a look at our uh, DMX cubes here. We're going to go down to DMX, uh, the DMX component of it, and just make sure that our patch is correct. So I've chose my DMX library. I've chose my fixture patch. Um, this is fixture one, two, three, and four, respectively. Now, when I hit play, we should see everything cooking. This is great. Um, one of the only problems with this is I can't seem to, this, this works well when it's a PMW, or uh, I can't get this, I can't seem to get this working well when it is a, when the effect is a sine wave. Uh, for example, if I go back to, let's see, I'm gonna do it on my laptop so that we can see it in our gameplay here. Uh, if I go back to my executors, 
I'm just going to turn this fader off and I'm going to turn this fader on. And you can see that it's kind of doing something. Um, that it's not doing it in a sine wave. Let's take a look at our layout view and see what it should be doing. Okay, so that's just a simple RGB chase. Um, RGB, CMY chase. And it is not reflecting the console, which is a problem. Um, I have not figured out a good workaround for this yet. If anybody knows a good workaround for this, I would love to hear back from you. Um, but this is about as far as I've got with this. Um, and I would love to expand on this because I think this is a really powerful thing that can happen uh, if you can apply these DMX controllable materials to you know all sorts of different meshes you know I'm being rather basic and using a cube um, just to kind of prove a concept at this point but the the possibilities are endless um, yeah and uh, I think that's it I think we're gonna wrap this video up for today um, I'm definitely going to keep uh, exploring Unreal Engine, um, exploring DMX and Unreal Engine. Um, there's a great plugin uh, for Unreal Engine called Carbon for Unreal uh, that I would love to get more in depth with and possibly create some tutorials if anybody's interested about that. And just, uh, yeah, hopefully bring my uh, pre visualization game uh, significantly up and higher uh, in 2021. Um, so yeah, cool. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah.